I'm going to be discussing is the natural hair movement finally over and if so what to do next. To understand if the natural hair movement is fine over, first of all, you need to know what the natural hair movement is. The late 2000s, for me personally, that's when I really noticed the natural hair movement. I started wearing my hair out around 2009, and that's when I noticed a lot of natural hair YouTubers wearing their hair natural. My first memory of wanting to grow my hair and have natural hair was seeing Kenya Moore with her lovely hair. And then I decided to go on YouTube and thought, oh, okay, I wanna get my hair like that. And the first people that came up were the Glam Twins and Mahogany Curls. Anyway. So seeing how these girls here flourished, I was just like, I need to be a part of this. And before I knew it, I was in the movement. <laughs> I didn't even know it was a movement. As a child, my hair was always in a protective style. It was cane road, it was twists. And then when I got to a certain age, or maybe 16, I think it was, I had my hair relaxed. Having my hair relaxed, I'd done so many things. I chopped my hair into a pixie cut about three different occasions. I always had my hair straightened. Even when I was growing up my relaxer, I always wore my hair straight. Effectively, my hair was heat damaged. When my hair started to grow back, I did actually continue to straighten my hair. I thought I had loose curls, which is not the case. If you've seen my wash and go videos, you can see I've got tight ringlets and my hair is no longer damaged. So what I'm gonna move on to now is explaining to you, watching a lot of natural hair YouTubers, I thought I had to do what they said I had to do. Not because I'm easily influenced, however, I can see the health and growth of their hair and I wanted some of that. However, what I do in my videos, I always make a disclaimer. I always make the point that what works for my hair will not necessarily work for your hair. And the reason why I always say that is from my own personal experience. And that was seeing that what works for my mum's hair, what works for my daughter's hair, does not work for my hair. Another thing for me about being a natural hair YouTuber, I didn't want to jump on the bandwagon. Everyone was using, I'm not gonna mention brand names, but if you know, you know, the popular ones, you know. Everyone was using these brands and I just, I used it from time to time and I'm like, okay, well, what she's doing on her hair is just not working on my hair. And for a moment, I'm not gonna lie to you, I was secretly using hair grease. Now, I weren't using it religiously, but when I was doing my wash and goes, I was using hair grease just to grease my scalp. I don't think I necessarily wanted to mention it on camera during that time at the beginning because hair grease was deemed to be the devil. I did not want to have hair grease on my channel because I felt that it would put viewers off and I felt like I'd get a lot of ridicule until it got to a point and I was just like, do you know what? I'm just gonna start using hair grease and tell you guys I'm using hair grease and whatever happens, happens. And thank God I did because I'm able to live my truth. I'm able to show you how I do my hair and I wasn't being fake guys, don't get it twisted. I just, I just did not mention that I grease my scalp with hair grease. So as I said, I started off with wash and goes, reason being because I suppose during the time when people really started going natural, that's what you saw. You saw a lot of wash and goes, you saw a lot of afros, and it's because people wanted to wear their hair free flowing. Previously we'd been told, I suppose by society or by our employment, that having our natural hair out was unprofessional. And we wanted to show that we can look professional with our natural hair that we are born with. And personally, that was the route I was going down. And I wanted to explore my hair, I wanted to explore my curls, and I wanted to be proud of my hair. So that's exactly what I was doing. This felt like a major breakthrough for me guys because as I said, I did not know what my curls looked like. When I was younger, my mum used to wash and do my hair and camera my hair. My hair was never out. When she took my hair out, I'd have, a, I guess it would be like a braid out, but it wouldn't be to wear out. My hair would just be taken out of the style, washed and rebraided. So I never saw what my curls looked like. Even when my hair was being washed, my hair was over the bath and I just didn't see what my hair looked like. I just knew I had a lot of hair. And by the time um, I'd sat down for my mum to do my hair, she'd already combed out my curls so my hair was just big so as I said I was getting to explore my curls in the late 2000s and I loved what I saw and I didn't realize how juicy and springy my ringlets were and that's why I wanted to show it to you guys because a lot of people would walk up to me in the street ask me where I bought my hair from where I bought my hair from ask me um, am I mixed ask me how did I get my hair like that? Asked me is my hair relaxed, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, okay, my hair is getting a lot of attention. Let me just put it on somewhere, on a platform where I can explain to hundreds of thousands, if not millions, what I did with my hair and give you some tips and have you guys give me some tips. I'm, I'm all open for information, guys. 
over the last couple of years um i think it started before pandemic i think novelty kind of wore off with wash and goes so i started to try protective styles but protective styles with wigs so i'd plait my hair underneath obviously and then i would wear my wigs however this was not successful <laughs> my hair was getting damaged because i wasn't taking care of my cane rows and then i was just like okay protective styles aren't good for my hair but it wasn't the protective styles guys it was what i wasn't doing to my hair and if you do want to see what i'm talking about i can show you how i maintained my hair how i damaged my hair in a protective style and yes you can take it from there anyway over time the novelty wore off with my wash and goes and as i said i started doing protective styles so i've really now taken my protective style journey seriously my hair is growing immensely my hair is juicy i've got the hair grease going i'm going to jump into why i think the natural hair movement may possibly be over where do we go from here okay so for me personally and i know i'm not the only one who said this but for me personally being a youtuber and making weekly videos of videos on a consistent basis i found that the natural hair movement was too demanding and what i mean by that guys was having to keep up with trends there was always a new trend so there was rice water there was coconut oil by the way they did not work for my hair um there was pre-pooing there was the baggy method there was the curly girl method it was just too much for me and i just wanted to do my hair and have my hair flourish and grow it was just it was too demanding in regards to that would i say the natural hair movement is over i'd say no not necessarily however i do think that was a bit off put into a lot of um a lot of viewers like yourselves because it was off putting to me <laughs> and i noticed that my hair wasn't getting the treatment it needed because to keep up with the trends I would have to do another style and I'd have to do another thing to my hair and I noticed it started to take a toll on my hair so I kind of pulled back I even stopped doing videos for a while because I just thought what was the point so that was number one it was too demanding in my opinion these are just my opinions guys number two I found it a bit too confusing what I mean by this is not only the products being used it was also the regimens okay so I'll start off with the products it was kind of confusing for me to understand knowing that I have low porosity hair do I use sulfates parabens do I eliminate mineral oils and the reason why I found it confusing is because my hair loves mineral oil yes it does it loves mineral oil my hair doesn't like sulfates but it likes parabens and it was just trying to figure out what works with my hair so where I was being told I mean, I'm a grown up, I can do what I want, but <laughs> where I was being told not to use certain products on my hair because of sulfates, because of parabens, because of mineral oil and, and silicones, there you go. I don't know, I felt like I was at a crossroads because what I was being told not to use actually worked for my hair. So I was like, okay, I'm stuck in a rut here. Then I was just like, okay, let me just carry on using what I'm meant to be using. However, me being a YouTuber, I'm now having to use products that don't contain sulfates, don't contain parabens, don't contain mineral oils, don't contain silicones and it was taking a toll on my hair, it was drying out my hair, my hair likes moisture, my hair likes to be sealed in immensely hence why I went straight to the petroleum and was greasing my scalp and I noticed my hair started to take a nice turn it was doing what it needed to do so that was number two, I found it too confusing personally actually I think I should have made this number one but number three it was expensive it is expensive but not so much now because i've i feel like i've parted ways to an extent guys you know what i mean i'll just give you a little example one day i went into the hair shop one of my subscribers recommended that i do a review on a certain product and i was like yeah sure went into the shop a bottle of gel and this gel cost 22 pounds and I've really had to rethink and for months, uh, yes months, for months I left it and then eventually I bought it, it went on sale and it was £16 but even still at £16 it's quite pricey because the thing is if it's a product works for my hair I'm going to continue to buy it. I'm not paying £16 a month for a product that I'm going to use maybe two to three times a month. Why I say two to three times a month is because if I'm doing wash and goes I'm heavy handed on a gel because my hair seems to need a double coat of gel. So that product wasn't gonna last long. However, that wasn't even the case. The product didn't even work on my hair. I literally had to throw it away. I couldn't find anyone whose hair it worked on, but it did not work on my hair. It didn't work on my mum's. And I was so disappointed. I was really irritated. And I think that was one of the turning points why I decided to go back to using hair grease predominantly. I wouldn't say solely, but predominantly. 
I've done wash and goes with hair grease and gel and I've just incorporated the hair grease into my regimen and at the moment I'm just solely using hair grease well plus a leave-in okay so I touched on this point a little bit earlier and it's number four I found that the movement could be a bit judgmental I'm not talking about the movement in its entirety I'm talking about certain members in the movement I found that certain members would create subgroups due to their hair types or due to age groups being older and using products in the past and what I'm going to explain what I mean by that in a sec guys in regards to hair typing I had someone say to me as I've, I said this in my previous video she said to me that my hair is not 4A my, my hair is a mixture between 3A 3B and 3C because I have the exact same hair as her I don't know how she would know this just by looking at my hair because looking at my mum's hair we look like we've got the exact same hair however we have not I've explained this many times I've explained it in my video I'm not going to explain it right now then I would have some people who had 4C hair type textures saying to me that I couldn't use a certain product for instance it was shea butter I couldn't use shea butter on my type hair because they were implying that I was taking something away from them that they had for their hair and I get that however my hair dries out a lot I need a thick product to put on my hair hence why I used it I never claimed that my hair was a 4C I don't like the typing system myself but I talk about the typing system or I'll say my hair is 4A and 3C because that's what people resonate with that's what people understand it gives you an idea I don't use it and say this is indefinitely what my hair is I'm just giving you a baseline so you've got an idea talking about age groups as well guys when I was doing my little mini series about the s curl products and uh, s curl texturizer products obviously I wasn't texturizing my hair I was using s curl texturizing gel it was gels for hair that was texturized when I was using pink lotion and yeah the s curl gels it was mainly the s curl gels I had an older lady and I'm telling me she was older she was saying to me um, when she was in high school that's what they used and this was the product they used and it's nothing new and why am I acting like it's new I wasn't acting like it's new I was paying homage to it the gold curl activator yeah that's it my mum used that in the 80s my dad even used it in the 80s I wasn't saying that it was something brand new I even called my videos old school hair products however it was as though I wasn't allowed to use these products because I was reintroducing it on my channel and obviously that offended some people or some person so that kind of irritated me and I'm like we're all here for each other I'm trying to give you tips I'm trying to introduce new things new things that you possibly haven't even thought of yet that you could take away from my video I'm not telling you what to do I'm just telling you this is what I do and you might want to try it yourself everyone is always going to have an opinion everyone is always going to tell you what you should do what you shouldn't do with your hair with your life whatever it's just human nature however for me as a YouTuber, a natural hair YouTuber, I felt and feel it's my responsibility to hold up my end of the bargain to you guys and be as honest and um, transparent as possible and to respect your own opinions with your hair and that's fine, I'm not telling no one what to do. So what works for my hair, as I said guys, may not work for yours, I'm just giving you tips and solutions and what I'm trying to say is with my regimen, I would maybe hope that you could take something away from my my regimen and incorporate that into your regimen and or offer me some tips something that I am and that's what I've had from some of you guys and I love that and I've tried it. I've even done recommended videos that you've asked me to do in regards to what you yourselves do and I really really appreciate that guys so thank you if you have relaxed hair and you watch my channel thank you thank you for watching if you have relaxed hair and you use hair grease kudos to you I am not ignorant to the fact that people have so many different hair textures I mean in my household alone there's lots of different hair textures I've got about I feel I have about four to five different hair textures on my head very subtle but there are different hair textures in my household my son's hair is quite loose my daughter's hair is quite tightly coiled my hair is in between that's how it goes so with that being said guys I don't necessarily think that the natural hair movement is over I think it's evolved I definitely think it's still around I think it will always be around because so many people have now become in touch with their natural hair I just see people branching off different ways I've seen people who have said they're they're leaving the natural hair movement and going back to relaxer I mean whatever you consume guys whether it's 
mentally, physically, spiritually, you've got to be in touch with you. I do feel that there were subcategories in the natural hair movement that split off and I'm, I'm gonna be very honest, there were times that I would be in certain Facebook groups and I would see bullying going on about natural hair because certain people didn't have a certain hair type. And that wasn't cool, I just wasn't feeling it. So I kind of removed myself from that and I'm like, okay, I don't wanna be a part of this. I don't wanna be a part of something that's turning, or looks like it has the potential to turn into something ugly. I want to just let you guys know what I do with my natural hair. And that was that, and just plain and simple. And I think a lot of people have gone that way. A lot of people I know use hair grease now, a lot of people have relaxed their hair, a lot of people have completely shaved their hair off. A lot of people are just being them and that's what I love. And I think from the natural hair movement it has helped people to evolve and be them. Be who you are, be who you were born to be. Okay guys, so if you have any comments or questions don't forget to leave them down below in the comment section. And if you do want to see how badly damaged my natural hair was, you might want to go and click this video now where you can have a look at that and please don't mind the fingerprints all on my mirror behind me. <laughs> anyway guys, thank you so much for watching and click now to have a look or you can click this playlist to have a look at my uh, natural hair hair grease videos.